<laughs> so, this week's talk is called Conscious Contact with Your Higher Power. Mm. Mm. It's based on the first book of Samuel. And the first book of Samuel is, is uh, it's got a lot going on. I, I just, I, the beginning, which is not really the part of the conscious contact, but I have to laugh at the, the phrasing, the wording in the Bible is really something that, uh, what's her name? <laughs> what's her name? Oh my goodness. I don't have to remember names anymore. They're written out somewhere. <laughs> you know, last week, I, Hannah. Hannah could not have a child because the Lord had closed her womb. It's the wording of the Bible. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? I can't use law on that, quite frankly. I cannot substitute that for law. Uh, and then, and, and then uh, her husband's other wife, who had multiple children, uh, picked on her and made fun of her because the Lord had closed her womb. Twice it's uh, in the, wow, it's kind of nasty. And, and then later on, she's uh, she goes to her brother-in-law's house, Eli, who's one of, one of the judges and what have you, and he uh, he sees her praying, but she's moving her mouth and not saying anything, and she's crying hysterically and praying. And he says, have you been drinking? <laughs> she accuses her, could you embarrass us like this? And she said, I have not been drinking. I am praying. I am praying, praying fervently because I want a child. Oh, well, go forth. You'll have one. And she does. <laughs> the Lord opened her womb, and she had a, she went on to have a few children. But later on, in, in the third chapter is where we get into Samuel, that's his name, uh, who was one of the children. He kept hearing voices, and he thought it was Eli's voice. Eli, the, the judge, the the saint of the family, based the high priest of the family, and you know, here, here, Samuel, 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 and they'd go in, and Eli's resting in his room, and said, "Did you call me?" And he says, "No." What are you talking about? Okay, and then a little bit later, here, Samuel, 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 go back at Eli. Did you call me? No, I did not. What are you talking about? And then the third time this happens, and he goes, and Eli realized, oh, Samuel's hearing a higher voice. He's hearing uh, an internal voice. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, you could call it a psychic experience. You could call it a, a prayerful experience. Because the family had kind of lowered its vibration a bit. So they were not hearing. There was not a lot of prophets uh, in this family because they had gone so, so, so into materiality that, that they really weren't hearing much of the higher stuff. But here comes Samuel, and he's hearing. He's hearing the higher uh, voices and Eli said what you're hearing is the voice of God or what you would call the voice of God and that's what's guiding you and I thought about this and I and I thought about my own life and how many times I've heard the voice and ignored it because I based everything on the material the intellectual mind well you know I would blow off psychic events and spiritual events because I couldn't explain them through the intellect, through the physical. And, and so I, uh, I have missed out on many opportunities, I think. Now, what's nice is they always keep coming back. They keep coming back. A uh, story I heard the other day that fascinated me was from my, my brother called me. We were chatting, and we had, his grandson is two and a half years old, Trip. Trip Bright, is that a great name? His last name is Bright. And he's a sweet kid. I am, about a year ago, I got to meet him. But on Fourth of July weekend, uh, my niece and her husband and two children were at at his family's beach house down in Wilmington, and Trip was going up to all his cousins and headbutting them, <laughs> <laughs> and I'd rather strongly, and they'd say, "Cut that out!" And he would still do it. He butt him in the head. Said, what are you doing? And they gave him a time out in the corner. <laughs> they still in the head. So on the way home, my niece actually said, Trip, I don't understand. You know, what were you doing today? And that, why did you need to keep doing that? And he said, and he explained to her at that point, he said, well, that show I watch, I couldn't tell you what it is. That show I watch, that's, that's, they don't have hands. 
So that's how they give a high five to each other. They butt each other in the head. So you see, he was actually intending something nice. He was hearing, do this to show love, to show friendship with my cousins. I had to laugh because my brother said that my niece said, well, he's not watching that show anymore. And I said, I understand. She should tell, have him watch the stuff we watch, like the Three Stooges and the Wiley P. Coyote. <laughs> Same stuff. That's funny, you know. <laughs> But that voice, are you listening to your voice? Are you in conscious contact with your higher power that loves you with an everlasting love? Do you trust it? Do you desire it? And that's, we're not bad if we don't, but let's get on board and start. But first, I think one would need faith that I have a higher power that loves me with an everlasting love, cannot not love me, cannot not love me. Do you believe it? Do you? I, I got on board with that early on in my healing process because I like that better than the alternative. Mm -hmm. That was a lot better thought. You mean there is a God that can be in my understanding that loves me all the time, that bears me no ill will, that has no judgments against me, and I said, yes, that can be, that can be, there, there is that God. Because in my healing process, it said, God as we understood God. And I liked that one. I'd heard some other people speak of this God, and it made sense. It's actually the most logical understanding of God that I could think of. Was that this being, and being doesn't mean physical being. It means energy, this being of energy is bigger than anything I could ever imagine. Now, how big can you imagine? Now let, let the God of your understanding be bigger than that. And it loves you. And it can't not love you. And with that, that it means it loves everybody. You must understand that the sun that shines, if you were standing next to any of the bad guys, we both get the same amount of sunlight. It's not like sun would shine on the good guy and not on the bad guy. It's the light from within that isn't realized. And it's not just on the bad guy. It's the, my judgment of the bad guy. You get that? I'm not allowing myself to let my light be revealed on what I fear. I'm not letting my light shine on what I fear. And I want to. And I think we all want to. I think we all want to let our light shine on that which we fear, be it ourselves and our past behaviors, be it our mother and our father and our brothers and our sisters. And I'm just talking about the immediate blood family, let alone our brothers our sisters everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. We want to let our light shine. And yet, it seems too scary for some of us, wouldn't you agree? Or some of us, we're a little afraid to let our light shine over there where it's been dark for so long, over there where such violence took place. Over there can be right there. Over there can be across the room. Over there can be in another country. Over there can be across town. Whatever. It's over there. And if I've gone off to a far country in my mind, I'm not going to be interested in uh, letting light shine because I think I have. In my incorrect perception, I think I've let the light shine and this is what it is and it's bad. But then we come up here on Sunday mornings for some reason. For some reason we come here on Sunday mornings to hear this message that is uh, very different than perhaps the news we've been giving ourselves all week. And the news we give each other over the phone or in the email or in Facebook, or as one friend of mine likes to call it, crack book. Uh, <laughs> that Mr. Frank Dunn calls it, I got on a crack book today because he feels addicted to it. <laughs> he can't get it off of Facebook. 
so he calls it crack book. And but we get on there and we let that be our news. But how early in the morning do you go within? How early do you go within for conscious contact with your higher power before you go to the newspaper or Facebook or the headlines on AOL or 1010 wins? I'm not asking this for guilt. I'm asking this in case you're not. Could I remind you to go within personally before you get the news on the elder, before your intellect takes charge? Before your intellect, which we think is so intelligent, takes charge, would you? Would you go within and ask what your higher power thinks about you today? Would you ask your higher power, how much am I loved today? I'd like to know because that's where I want to make my decisions from. Is how much I am loved with things that have nothing to do with the intellect. How much I am loved that has nothing to do with aches and pains in my body. How much I am loved that has nothing to do with my past and any hurts I have experienced before, could they mean nothing today? Because today is the day the Lord hath made. Today is the day that love hath made. Today is the day. And I understand, well, how could that happen if there's love? Well, that happened because there is love. It's a love I don't necessarily understand because you can't explain it with the intellect. So maybe the intellect isn't as charming as it ought to, uh, as we've been making it. Maybe my intellect that is based on my five senses isn't quite as seductive as I have been allowing it to be. Maybe my heart could guide me a little more. And maybe that still small voice that reminds us in so many ways that we are loved. Because you see, if I get up in the morning and I go within to hear the still small voice, then in the news, in the Facebook, I'm going to start seeing love. There are going to be key words revealed to me that is actually spirit speaking to me instead of the world, instead of my intelligence instead of and it's the coolest thing where we, we begin it's, it's like Kelly was sharing she decided to stay still last week and then all of a sudden all sorts of things because she didn't try to convince herself of what was wrong instead I'm just gonna sit tight here and wait a moment uh, before I make my pronouncements to myself and to the world of, of what's missing in my life let me, let me just wait a, a day and so many things you wanted to see revealed were revealed. It happens all the time if you just pay attention. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea of how powerful you are? Who here, who here really knows that they're powerful? Yeah. And some others of us, eh, I'm not sure. I'm not really sure if I'm powerful or not. I want to assure you all, you are very powerful. First of all, you manifested a body. Do you get it? That didn't happen by a fluke. You, somewhere in a divine idea, manifested a body. And then you manifested clothing to put on it. Doesn't matter if somebody gave it to you, or the clothing to you, you can't have it if, if you don't receive it. And that's what makes us all very powerful manifestors and co-creators on this planet. Everybody today manifested a way to get here. Everybody. That's how powerful we are. Now, if we st would start taking on in our mind, I am a powerful being. It was my friend Erica, who's not with us any longer, who, who was reminded me. She said, Sean, you're a powerful manifester. And I hadn't really considered it before because I didn't have everything I could imagine. <laughs> I didn't yet have all that stuff. You know, the cars and the it's status symbols, really. I didn't have all that. 
Nor I didn't even have a relationship at that point. I didn't have, you know, there's so much I didn't, but there was so much I had. It was crazy. I had a crazy amount of stuff in a small apartment. And, uh, <laughs> and, I, and I, I, but I had friends and I did have, I had a life that I, that was beyond really my imaginings then. And this is 12 years ago, 12, 13 years ago. And Erica said, Sean, you're a really powerful manifester. And I, my first thought was, oh, stop. And then I looked at it and I thought, she's right. I really am. I'm a really powerful manifester, and I don't have to work hard to manifest. I have to work diligently, which means to pay attention. But I, my, the hardest, the hardest work I did was this. <laughs> that was the hardest thing. To be quiet. To stop talking. Stop trying to convince God of what was missing. Try to stop trying to convince you of what's missing. And to start reminding myself of what's present. You see, the presence of God is active and present all the time. And, and, within the presence of God is everything I want. Everything I really want. Now, I had to start looking at what is it I want in the physical. And I was allowed to want, my teachers told me, you're allowed to want anything you want. But I thought, I have taken a step further and asked, why do I want it? Not for a judgment, but to see, you know, you want a, you want a, fun, you want a fancy car or something, you know, to impress people. But I wanted it for more than that, too. But, so I asked, oh, you want a car? Well, for freedom. Okay, then pray for freedom. Begin to focus on freedom. Begin to focus on what the thing will give you. And then the universe, in all its wisdom, will give you what you want. And it may come in the form of a car, it could come in the form of relationships, you want love, you know, you want peace, you want joy, you want you want to know yourself. Then the universe starts shape shifting to give you the very occasions, the very circumstances for that what you want to experience in your true desire. That all happens with conscious contact with your higher power. So that you never again have to tell yourself, I don't have my good because this thing is missing. This object is missing and therefore I don't have my good. And I'll tell you, a lot of us want a relationship, but what we really want is an object that loves us and we can love us. I've told you the story with my friend in New York years ago when she said, I think I'm ready for a relationship now. I said, really? Yes. She was in her 40s. She said, I think I'm finally ready. You know, because I, I, want, some, I want somebody whose shoulder I can cry on and to tell my troubles to. And I said, please place that in a personal and tell me what you get. No <laughs> 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 response to that. <laughs> but what she wanted, I could, it was clear, she wanted her pain to be seen for what it was instead of the story she was telling it. She'd been through a lot of emotional upheaval, and it was clear that she wanted to share some piece with, of herself. And I don't know if she was up to having somebody else share with her. But it's like, if you want a car, you want a relationship, you want, what do I want this for? What good, what's the good I want to get from it? What is the good? I want a chair. Well, what's the good I expect to get from a chair? Comfort, one would assume. Uh, you know, what, 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 whatever it is, we all in classes, we work our way down to, well, I think this will give, give me. And it's not about getting rid of something. Let's not seek to get rid of our bad. Let's seek to reveal our good. Do we see the difference? Getting rid of stuff will not give us our good. Taking on our good will release that stuff that is no longer for our good. And so, I ask you, would you get up in the morning, perhaps put your feet over the side of the bed before you start doing this, rather than this being an occasion to go back to sleep, uh, and get in touch with your higher power, that you consciously become aware that there is love, and there is love for you that there is joy, and there is joy not only for you, but in you. 
that there is peace, not only for you, but in you. That there is possibility, not only for you, but in you. That there is intelligence, not only for you, but in you. There is presence, not only for you, but in you. And would you start as early in the day as you get before you give yourself any information from the intellectual outside? I was talking to a friend of mine the other night, and he said, well, it's hard for me to meditate because I've got so much to do in the morning. I mean, I've got to take the dogs out, and then I've got to have my coffee, and then I've got to read my newspaper. And I said, well, five minutes before you, you know, yeah, let the dog pee. But after that, before you start taking an inflow of information from the world, would you give yourself an inflow of information from spirit, from love, from peace? from presence. As Samuel did, at first he was hearing these voices that he thought was from the outside. At some point, would you become aware the voices are coming from inside and they're telling you, I'm on your side and I don't have to worry. Nothing good can leave me and all my good can be I've got a wealth of good in me now. Let's all that, say that together. I've got a wealth of good in me now. One more time. I've got a wealth of good in me now. And then one more time. I've got a wealth of good in me now. So it is. Amen.